Well, hey guys, I uh, got some exciting news I want to share. I'll probably do a follow-up video in the next few days. Uh, probably have Kent involved in that one as well, uh, just to follow up with some, some things I want to talk about for a minute uh, regarding our building situation. And a, a lot's developing right now, even as we, we speak in the, in the today and yesterday, and, and I would assume in the next couple of days, new things will, will happen. So we'll We'll put out a video and, and just try to keep everybody updated. Um, let, let me back up. I want to I want to I want to talk about our building situation. I want to get information to you. Um, one thing that's really important for us to remember is uh, we are an elder led congregational church. That's our church polity structure. Um, what that means on things like this is. Uh, as pastors, we have authority, but not authority to make financial decisions of this magnitude. These are corporate decisions. Um, so how we serve as pastors and our leadership is is to kind of sift through things that would be a waste of time, building situations that would be a waste of time, and to only put before you uh, wise decisions to consider. Because at the end of the day, the church is either going to say yes uh, or no to whatever financial big purchases we make and um, and we just want to put the right things before you and I do want to argue and I feel it my responsibility as a pastor to argue that this is a wise thing that we're putting before you this is this this whole uh, scenario that we're we're taking up your time to consider uh, is worth our time uh, that I want to argue that for a minute, and and I need to put forth some more information so that we can at least know what we're dealing with. Um, some of y'all are brand new to the church. I got to create at least a little bit of context. I'm going to try to make this video fast, uh, but but we got to go back all the way to 2008 and remember that we started in our living room. Uh, just a few college kids. We quickly uh, moved on to the University of West Florida campus. Uh, from there. Uh, we stayed there till 2011 when we replanted the church in the inner city area of Brownsville. We felt very burdened for that community in that season. Uh, we had people from the church move there to be a gospel presence and witness in that community. Um, and, and then we just put all our chips in to, to, to preach the gospel to a lot of people in those neighborhoods. So we were meeting in Brownsville Baptist Church uh, on Sunday night for a little while, for about nine months. Uh, we met in the Fricker Center for a few years, and both of those are right there on Cervantes in the Brownsville area. We outgrew uh, that building, I think, in 2016 to 2017, and we moved uh, to the just-built, brand-new community center, Woodland Heights. And, uh, and we were in Woodland Heights all the way up until COVID. Uh, as soon as the lockdown happened uh, last year, uh, we were obviously unable to meet in those facilities, and we've been all over the place since then. And and we're currently, obviously, we're, we are at uh, another church, Pine Summit, that's graciously uh, allowed us to use their facilities, been very hospitable to us, uh, but that has a timeline. We can't do that forever. We can't meet in another church's building on Sunday night forever. Um, so here's the reality of our situation up till now. We simply cannot do Sunday night services forever. Not that anybody even wants to do that, uh, but it's important to remember there's a there's a there's a timeline here, and I don't know how long that is, but we don't want to just we we can't do this forever. Sunday night services in other buildings. I think we all know that. Uh, what we also can't do is bank on the fact that we will always have access to government owned buildings like schools or community centers. Uh, or university classrooms, the places that we've met in the past 12 years, um, the window of opportunity is, is, is quickly shutting for those. In many states in the U.S., churches can no longer use government-owned buildings, and it depends on counties, and it gets down into the local level on a lot of those decisions also, uh, but those will not always be options. So uh, the way we function as a church for most of the history of this church will not be an option uh, in the future. So if we're looking five year, 10 year, 20 year vision for this church, we, we can't be looking at renting government owned buildings any longer. Um, so 
we've got to begin to think about purchasing and we have been and we've been saving for four years now um, pretty aggressively y'all know about a year and a half ago we made an offer on uh, my father's vineyard there off of uh, I'm going blank on the road um, uh, nine mile no not nine mile um, y'all know where it is <laughs> I'm forgetting where the what road this is on um, we made the offer on my father's vineyard at 1.6 million uh, they accepted that um, it was a 14,000 square foot metal framed warehouse basically that had been turned into a church um, and that was a fair price at that time uh, kind of um, it didn't have a parking lot uh, we would have immediately had to knock down a wall uh, the whole back wall of the worship area and extend that so that would have been another 200 300,000 to, to do that repair possibly um, there were, we would have been up into the $2 million range on that building likely, uh, not to mention that it had a, a lot of roof issues, uh, on it. Also the parking agreement didn't work. We backed out of that in, in God's good providence. And, um, and, and that all fell through at that same time. Y'all know we were looking at Brownsville, uh, assembly, but at that time they were talking about a $2 million number Brown Brentwood was, and, um, and we didn't we hadn't saved as much we've saved over 150,000 more since then and then they've brought their number down and so there's we've kind of uh come a lot closer uh since then and so um a, a few additional things that happened there is I've been meeting with this pastor for four years I'll give the long story on that another time but I've been meeting with him in his office for the last four years and we've uh, he's grown to trust me and in, in our church and and uh, and it seems they they really like the idea of selling to us in particular and and so that is something that has developed over the last few years as well um, so a few questions I want to address. Number one, can we afford Brentwood Assembly? Can we even afford it? Uh, and and the an the quick answer is no. We don't have 1.7 million um, to to pay cash for it. So we would have to uh, get a loan, and we've been trying to do that with banks uh, to get a loan for the remaining amount that we would need uh, to buy the building. And banks are not lending to churches, uh, so. Um, so it's been a it's just been a dead end road, and they're not lending to any churches really. Uh, a lot of actually, a lot of banks are canceling. Uh, Y'all know the term canceling and what is being done in the culture uh, toward churches in particular and in Christian organizations. They're getting threats from other larger companies that if they continue to lend or do business with churches that they will no longer do business with that bank and so banks are no longer lending to to churches this is happening in some of the larger banks um and and, and likely that will be a pattern that continues so for us to get a loan from a church on that level is 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 possibly not going to be an option in many cases but also they just don't see churches as essential right now and Many churches aren't meeting. A lot of churches giving has gone down in this season. Those things aren't true of us, but of many churches. And they're not looking at our particular situation. They just have blanket policies um, that they're just not lending to churches. So we've hit a lot of roadblocks there until uh, a few days ago, uh, Jeff Bentley began to send and actually Ron called initially and Jeff Bentley as well and began to give our financials. Uh, and all of our, our financial information to uh, the Wesleyan Foundation, which is a nonprofit lender, uh, the second largest in the nation, very reputable. I can give more information to you if you're interested in that. Uh, but this is a very reputable lender. And um, I talked to the vice president on the phone uh, for the, for the uh, church lending department and uh, for about an hour uh, yesterday. And he was very encouraged by our situation uh he seemed very hopeful on the phone that they would lend to us um and then this morning they sent us a proposal saying they did want to they want to move forward and they want to lend us the money we need to purchase this building so that's huge um that is a huge huge part of this whole process that we could get the financing for it at a good interest rate which they gave us 
Um, we also would need to replace the whole roof and that's included in the loan. And again, we can give more info on that later. Um, but all of that uh, was, all of that fell into place today. Um, and, and, and all of that isn't perfectly finalized. There's a few other things we have to work through, uh, but, that, but the fact that the vice president uh, has proposed this to us, um, this, is, this is looking very promising at this point uh, that we'll get that loan. And the other encouraging thing he was saying, this is, should be encouraging to you, church. Um, he thought, there's no way y'all haven't been doing giving campaigns. He's like, I'm looking at your numbers, and I sat with our, with our budget committee, and um, we just think you've got to have been doing giving campaigns uh, to, to have this type numbers. And, and I was like, we, we've never done that. <laughs> we've never done a giving campaign. We just have normal budget giving, and we've saved, and that's how we have the money that we have. And he was, he was just saying, that's excellent. Um, that is absolutely excellent that your church is in this position just through the budget giving. So he, he's been doing this 30 years. He was very impressed. Um, he said it looks excellent on paper that we could afford this. Um, he didn't see it being a big risk or anything of that nature. And then he said this building is a really good price as well, which we know. Uh, but he was he was quite taken back by uh, a forty two thousand square foot building for this uh, for this price, um, and and that's the next question I want to answer. Some of y'all are going, why are we even looking at such a big building? Um, why don't we look at something smaller? And here's the simple answer, guys: we can't afford something smaller. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but we we can't afford a building one one third this size anywhere else in town. We've been looking for four years, and the only other building that came up that, that would meet the, the criteria that we need um, that we could afford was my father's vineyard. That was it. Um, everything else, if we have enough for the building, we would have to put an additional you know, 500000 a million into renovations to just get it usable. Um, or and a lot of them just don't have parking. That's a huge issue, or they're or they're super far away and they're just not big enough. So there's really we haven't had many buildings that could even be potential uh, potential thing properties to put before you. They just aren't there. Um, we've had a realtor helping us in this process, looking at all these things. We've had others in the church that are every week looking at all the commercial properties in Pensacola. And they're not even not just there in the area we're looking. We're talking all over Pensacola, north, south, east, west. Um, so, so this is what we have. This is what is out there. This is the only building uh, that we have found. So it's bigger than we need uh, currently, but we can't afford anything uh, smaller. Um, now here's, you say, what is the ultimate reason that we want to purchase this building in this part of town? And again, I, why this is so appealing is, is first and foremost to me, the location. You know, they always say location, location, location. Um, and maybe for every church, this isn't the bullseye location uh, for what they're aiming for. But I, I really want to have a building right off the interstate, central Pensacola. That really matters to me, and it has for a long time because my hope is that I, I feel like we could get everybody in the church to go to drive anywhere in Pensacola once a week if we're talking about just gathering on Sunday. But I'm hoping that we will come to the building more than just once a week for other ministries and other things that will be happening uh, in the coming years. And so I want a central location for our sake as members so that there can be a higher level of commitment uh, with different ministries throughout the week. If we're right off the interstate in Pensacola with how the infrastructure is, you can get there from all parts of the city uh, much quicker than if we're way off in some corner of Pensacola and you got to weave through everything and it takes you 45 minutes. And our church is very spread out. We have people in Milton, Gulf Breeze, uh, Cantonment, Alabama, uh, you know, all parts of Pensacola. Uh, we're all over the place, and 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 so a central location is is very important to me, and I I think for the future of our church. So the fact that this is so central is 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 huge for me, um, guys. I believe though, if we only gathered, if we only bought a building to gather on Sundays, it would be justifiable. 
because the, the scriptures are so clear about the importance of Lord's Day gatherings. We will obviously be using it for more than just Sundays, but that reason alone would be justifiable to purchase a building for the future of this church. Uh, but we want to use it for, for a lot more than that. Um, uh, let me see some other questions I wrote down here. You know, maybe somebody's thinking, why don't we buy and why don't we just build a new building? You know, um, I would encourage you to talk to Ted and Miguel on that. They, they build new commercial buildings, uh, for a living on base and they know the numbers of all that. So feel free to ask them, but I've asked them and a building of this size you know, is upwards of $8 million for this square footage. And that's, that's not fully furnished either. And this one is fully furnished. Everything in this building minus the computers, they're leaving. We're talking uh, huge brand new industrial refrigerators and ovens and everything, ice, ma I mean, brand new kitchens, uh, everything's there. All these chairs that are $400 chairs, there's hundreds of them sitting there. Um, everything's going to be there. Hundreds of thousands of dollars furnished, move in ready, um, to build a building, even half this size, let's say it's 4 million. If you were to build a building that was, uh, you know, 21,000 square feet or something, that's still going to be three to $4 million and it isn't furnished yet. So, I mean, any, and then you have to buy the property itself, which could be $500,000 Then you have to lay a parking lot. Then you have to buy lighting. I mean, it's very expensive to build a building and we we won't have enough money to build for for who knows how long if that were the option we want to go with so this is way cheaper to get a much nicer building that's move-in ready um, everything points us toward the wisdom of, of, of doing what we're, we're aiming at here now three things really quick uh, that I, I think everybody agrees on that we are weak these are weaknesses of the cross church I am not ashamed to say it I don't like it. I know many of you don't like it, but I think this building is a path forward to strengthening these weaker areas in our church. First is the usage of gifts. We can't use our gifts uh, as much as we would like to. Christ has gifted our church, and I believe in unusual ways. We have people who are able to do all sorts of discipleship ministries and teaching and outreach ministries, uh, teaching of youth and children. Like There is a lot that could be done. There's a school across the street from this building. After school ministries could be done. There's a food pantry that's brand new, never been used in this. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities uh, for for ministry and, and usage of gifts in our body. That is something that grieves me how little that can happen right now. This would put us in a different place. Additionally, we want to minister to our children and to the youth more. This allows for that. Um, we want to fellowship more. This allows for that. Y'all, some of y'all know in the first three years of the church, we had a potluck lunch after every sur Sunday service. We'd eat lunch together, and we get to meet all the new people that came to the church and talk to. You can't even city group doesn't allow for that because you're just with your city group every week. But this allows you to meet, fellowship, eat lunch with new people every week. It's awesome. They have a fellowship. They have a brand new kitchen and a, and a large fellowship hall that we could do that. Um, so, you know, yes, everyone's going to have to step up for this to work. There's going to have to become more ownership at many levels um, in order for this to work. I think we want that as a church. I believe that's a desire of, of ours as a church. Um, let me say one thing about money here, and, and then I'll be done. Uh, this is way longer than I wanted to talk. Those stimulus checks that God has providentially put in your pocket last year for many of us, then again this year, and then again today, maybe when you're watching this, you're getting another stimulus check. You're going to stand, and I'm going to stand accountable before the Lord for how we use those. Let's use them for the sake of the kingdom. Now, the Lord, you know, nobody's going to judge you with how you do that, but the Lord will. The Lord will hold us accountable with how we steward this. This is not money we earned. This is money that has been dropped into our lap, and we could use it for the sake of the church, for the future of this church. This is your church. This is our church. 
Um, let's give aggressively. I mean, if we if we give really aggressively, we can get this loan knocked down low right on the front end. That, that's going to put us in a way better position for the future of this church um, if, we can, if we can just give really generously right now. You all know I have not asked us to give as a church. We're putting, a, we're putting an itemized giving link uh, on the website in the giving portion that will say building fund. That's where you put it. And let me just say this. You are not going to outgive one little girl in our church who a few months ago gave $70 of change and little small bills and it was everything she had. She gave it to the building fund. She gave it, to, she said, I want this mom to go to the building. You're not gonna outgive that. That's the highest bar. The bar has been set. She gave all she had. So guys, pray through that. Think through uh, what you or your family needs to give. Um, we're going to, I've talked to the pastor, submitted a request for us to meet at the building, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. I want us to all see this building. I want you to go in and walk around. I want you to look at it yourself. And then we're gonna meet in that auditorium and have a question and answer time and a time of prayer. And that's not this Saturday, but the following Saturday. He's, uh, he's already said that we could do this, but he's, he's going to check with the board and make sure that's okay. Uh, but we're gonna, we want to meet up there on a Saturday afternoon or morning, whatever they allow us, and, and take a look at the building, pray, question and answer. Until then, guys, please text me. Please call me. Please ask me questions. I, I want to hear concerns and questions. Uh, we want to know, Kent as well, call him text him if you need financial information i probably have most of that but you feel free to call jeff uh, bentley as well um we we want every question and concern to come up as soon as possible um and and so nothing has been finalized yet we have made no decisions we need to make decisions soon on this um the the clock is ticking and and we want to make uh we want to make an offer on this building or we want to agree that we're not going to make an offer but we need to make a unified decision uh, soon. So consider these things, guys. Pray through this. Uh, like I said, I'll probably make another very short video since I said a lot in this one. That one won't be as long. Uh, if you've made it this long, Lord bless you, and uh, we'll see you soon, guys.